I really like ABBA. I mean, who doesn't? Catchy tunes, good lyrics, pretty voices, fancy costumes, they had it all. I decided I wanted to show the world that love. So I went to an arts and crafts store, bought a few letters and some string, and got to work on the bracelets. And then I got to wondering, how many distinct bracelets can I actually make? If I want a four letter bracelet, and I have enough A's and B's, which is to say, four of each. Clearly, there are four spots, and in each of them I can place an A, a B, or a B in reverse. That makes three times three times three times three, which is 81 distinct letter combinations. So there are 81 bracelets. Here is one, here is another, and wait a minute. These are the same bracelets. I just move a letter over from one side to the other. And this one here is the same bracelet as well. I just flip it over. Okay, so there aren't 81 bracelets, as there are multiple letter combinations that yield this each one. But we can handle that too. You can move one letter over, and two letters over, and three letters over, and that gives four different orders of the letters, and then each one of these can be flipped around to get four new ones. So, eight different letter combinations on the same bracelet. That means the total number of bracelets is 81 divided by 8, which is 10.125. That can't be right. What went wrong? Anyway, as an ABBA fan, I of course know that they actually write their name like so, with one of the B's in reverse. I put that into my bracelet instead, and now we see something strange. I flip it over, but it stays the same. So where we previously had eight letter combinations, four different orders to put the letters in, and each of them could be reflected. But on this one, reflecting gives us the exact same letter combination back, so we have only four different letter combinations. This means that among the 81 different letter combinations, some go together in groups of eight to a bracelet, some go in groups of four. How do I now find the actual number of bracelets? I could certainly spell out the 81 letter combinations by hand and group them together and count the groups. Wouldn't even take very long. But the whole point of the previous calculations of 3 to the 4th and 81 divided by 8 was to avoid this. Because it doesn't scale. What if I wanted to have the entire alphabet available? I'm not spelling out over 2 million different letter combinations by hand. So let's see if we can't glean some patterns from these bracelets. For any bracelet, there are eight different ways we can twist and turn on it. We can move one letter over, we can move two letters over, we can move three letters over, or we could not do anything, which I've peeked ahead, believe me, we should count that one. And for each of these four, we can also flip the bracelet around and get four new manipulations. And we see, as these manipulations are applied to this ABBA letter combination, it results in eight different letter combinations, and of these eight results in the box, only one is the same as the one we started with. Then we look at the more true ABBA bracelet with one of the B's in reverse. We apply the same manipulations here. Move a letter over and also flip. Move two letters over and also flip. Move three letters over and also flip. And do nothing and also flip. This time, there are four letter combinations in the box. And two of the results in the box are the letter combination we started out with. And then we have this letter combination with two Bs and two reverse Bs. We fill in the manipulation table the same way. Move one letter, reflect. Move two letters, reflect. Move three letters and reflect. Do nothing and reflect. There are now only two different letter combinations in the box and the initial letter combination appears four times. And finally, we have a combination like this, with only four A's. Here, no matter how we manipulate the bracelet, moving letters from one side to the other, flipping the bracelet over, we still get back the exact same letter combination we started with. So no matter which one of the eight different manipulations we do, we keep the same letter combination. So in summary, the first bracelet, with the ABBA combination and no reversed B's, we had eight letter combinations, and only the leave it be manipulation left a letter combination unchanged. 
while in the more faithful ABBA bracelet with only four letter combinations. Flipping the bracelet over didn't change the letter combination at all. And for the B reverse B, B reverse B bracelets, with only two letter combinations, there are four manipulations that leave the letter combination entirely unchanged. And finally, this boring last bracelet has only a single combination, but every single one of the eighth manipulations leaves the letter combination entirely unchanged. This sounds an awful lot, like they always multiply together to give eight. And this is, in fact, always true. Given any letter combination, the number of letter combinations that can be reached by manipulations, which is to say the number of letter combinations in that bracelet, multiplied by the number of manipulations that do not change that letter combination, always results in 8. This is a result in its own right, but for us it's just a stepping stone. A short proof goes along these lines. There are always 8 entries in one of these boxes, as there are 8 manipulations and no letter combination appears more or less often than any other. So the number of times any given letter combination appears in the box multiplied by the number of different letter combinations in the box has to be the number of entries in the box. And with this, we're finally ready to fix what went wrong with 81 divided by 8, all the way back 5 minutes ago. Our assumption then was that each bracelet contains 8 letter combinations but we've seen that that is not true. So instead of just taking all 81 letter combinations and dividing them by 8, we have to divide them up by how many letter combinations are in the same bracelet, and then divide by that number for each group. The total number of bracelets, here we go. The total number of bracelets is the number of letter combinations from bracelets with a single letter combination, divided by 1, plus the number of letter combinations from bracelets with 2 different letter combinations in them, divided by 2, plus the number of letter combinations from bracelets with 4 letter combinations in them, divided by 4, plus the number of letter combinations from bracelets with 8 letter combinations in them, divided by 8. And this is where we need that result from a minute ago. A letter combination from a bracelet with a single letter combination is a letter combination that is unchanged by 8 different manipulations. Similarly, a letter combination from a bracelet with two letter combinations in it is a letter combination that is unchanged by four different manipulations. A letter combination from a bracelet with four letter combinations in it is a letter combination that is unchanged by exactly two manipulations. And a letter combination from a bracelet with eight letter combinations in it is a letter combination that is only unchanged by the single leave it be manipulation. We're nearing the end here, I promise. One single insight left. I extract a factor of an eighth to make everything integer. And then we study what's left inside the bracket. What are these things? Eight times the number of letter combinations that are un unchanged by eight manipulations. Well, we have a letter combination that is unchanged by eight manipulations here. What are there eight of? There are eight circles. Four times the number of letter combinations unchanged by four manipulations. Here is a letter combination that is unchanged by four manipulations. What are there four of here? There are four circles. Two times the number of letter combinations that are unchanged by two manipulations. Here is one such combination. What are there two of? There are two circles. And finally, one multiplied by the number of letter combinations that are unchanged by a single manipulation. What is there one of here? A circle. So what we count here in this bracket is the total number of circles in all 81 of these boxes. In other words, the number of pairs consisting of one letter combination and one manipulation that does not change that letter combination. We're going to count the same circles, but we're going to group them up a little differently. Instead of counting them by going through all the letter combinations that are unchanged by 8 manipulations, and then all the letter combinations that are unchanged by 4 manipulations, and so on, we will count them by simply listing the manipulations and seeing what letter combinations are unchanged by these manipulations. So here we go. 1 8 multiplied by bracket the number of letter combinations unchanged by moving one letter over plus the number of letter combinations unchanged by moving two letters plus the number of letter combinations unchanged by moving three letters 
plus the number of letter combinations unchanged by doing nothing, plus the number of letter combinations unchanged by moving one letter, then flipping the bracelet, plus the number of letter combinations unchanged by moving two letters over, then flipping the bracelet, plus the number of letter combinations unchanged by moving over three letters and then flipping the bracelet, and finally, plus the number of letter combinations unchanged by just flipping the bracelet. Now, you might look at this and say, hang on, these are eight terms instead of four. Where's the gain? To which I say, the number of letter combinations unchanged by, say, four manipulations is really difficult to find in a systematic way. In comparison, the number of letter combinations unchanged by any given manipulation is pretty easy to find. I'll fill a manipulation table using a digit combination instead of a letter combination, so it's easy to track exactly what each manipulation does. For the first manipulation, we see that if the letter combination is to remain unchanged, we need all letters to be the same. So there are three letter combinations that have a circle here. For the second term, we see that letters 1 and 3 must be equal, and letters 2 and 4 must be equal. So there are nine letter combinations that have a circle here. Similarly to the first one, we see there are three letter combinations that have a circle in the third spot on the left side. Then the do nothing manipulation. All 81 letter combinations are unchanged by this manipulation. Next, the flipping manipulations. If we flip the bracelet after moving over one letter, this is the result. For this to be the same letter combination as the one we started with, letters 1 and 3 must be their own mirror images, so they must be A's. 2 and 4 must be each other's mirror images, so there are three letter combinations that have circles in this spot. If we flip the bracelet after moving over two letters, we get this digit combination. For a letter combination to be unchanged here, 1 and 2 must be each other's mirror images, and 3 and 4 must be each other's mirror images. So there are nine letter combinations that fulfill this. Flipping the bracelet after moving three letters, we are in a similar situation as flipping after moving a single letter. Three letter combinations are unchanged here too. Finally, just flipping the initial letter combination. To have a circle in this spot, letters 1 and 4 must be each other's mirror images, as must letters 2 and 3. So there are 9 letter combinations here. So in the end, the total number of bracelets is equal to 1 8 multiplied by 3 plus 9 plus 3 plus 81 plus 3 plus 9 plus 3 plus 9, which is 120 divided by 8, which is 15. So we can make 15 different four-letter bracelets using the letters A and B. This way of counting the numbers of distinct objects by way of combinations that are unchanged by manipulations is called Burnside's Lemma. It's worth reflecting on exactly how crazy this looks if you haven't seen any justification for it. So to summarize, we wanted to know the number of distinct bracelets. We could easily see that there were 81 letter combinations, but there weren't 8 letter combinations to each bracelet. Some bracelets had 8 letter combinations, but some bracelets had 4 or 2 or even just a single letter combination. So we had to take these letter combinations and group them up by how many letter combinations were in each bracelet. And then the size of each of these groups we can divide by 8 and 4 and 2 and 1, whatever fits that group. But the size of these groups isn't really easy to find. So we do some algebraic manipulation. We exploit that the number of letter combinations in a bracelet is inversely proportional to the number of manipulations that leave the letter combination unchanged. And finally, we realized what the expression seemed to count, and then we counted the same thing in a different way. Finally, we end up with an expression where each term is rather easy to find with standard combinatorial tools. And this expression, or rather the fact that this expression is equal to the total number of distinct bracelets we can make, is called Burnside's lemma. And I think this is a neat little combinatorial theorem that doesn't get all the attention it deserves.